let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this morning, Father. I thank you that you've given us another day to be on this earth. Father, may we use it, Lord, in a way that honors you. Father, whether it be at home that we're praying for brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, oh Lord, family members, Father, our pastors, Father, our community leaders, our country, our president, Father, we need your direction in the affairs of this world. We have to have your wisdom. So I ask, Lord, that you just stir our hearts to remember that if we are still here and you haven't taken us home, it's because you still have a work for us to do for you here. So, Lord, may we be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, even if it's just to take the place of praising you all day long. Father, as others are doing their work and doing things, Lord, may we be the one that are lifting up praises to you, Lord. Oh, we worship you and we glorify your name. Father, let your Holy Spirit be able to teach us this morning. Give us ears to hear, hearts willing to receive, Lord. Create in us a clean heart, Lord, that we may bring you joy, Father. That's what we desire. Teach us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I told you yesterday that I was going to do Psalms 115 yesterday, but then I wanted to just share, because it was our two-year anniversary, uh, some scriptures regarding why we do what we do. And we read 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4, and Hebrews 3, 13 through 14. Actually, 12, I think, through 15 is what I ended up doing. And then Psalms 117. Uh, it is such an honor to us to be able to share the Word of God. We love the Word of God. We want you to know how much God cares for you and loves you. It doesn't matter what circumstances you may be in. God loves you and in the end, for His children, He does work all things together for our good. They will polish us. They will prepare us for the wonderful things that God has ahead for us. This world is really, really tiny space of time compared to what eternity is. And God is preparing us for eternity. That is where there's going to be no more tears for us, no more sorrow, no more pain. Streets of gold, things that this world values so much will mean nothing over there because of the great things that God is preparing for His children. For those that accept what Jesus did on Calvary for them. That realize that it's not in our own righteousness, but in Christ's righteousness that we can come before our Heavenly Father. It's because of what Jesus did on Calvary, His death on the cross, His precious blood that was shed for us. His blood makes us whiter than snow. It doesn't make sense. But God works not in the natural, the way we imagine things, he has authority and power over everything. He spoke everything that we see into creation. The sun, the moon, the stars, this earth. Everything was just by him speaking the word. And here you are because he chose you to be here. Because he wants to give you the opportunity to be a child of the Most High God. All we have to do is accept what Jesus did for us, make him Lord of our life, and choose to follow his ways rather than the ways of the world. So let's go to Psalms 115. This is one of the Hallel songs. This is one of the songs of praise. We actually don't know who wrote this psalm. Um, it doesn't say that it was David. It doesn't say who wrote it. But whoever wrote it had a heart after God. We're probably just going to get through a little bit of it. Here we go. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. I keep hearing a frog. Not a frog, excuse me. A toad. Because I actually took a picture of it. I haven't seen a toad in our yard in a while. Usually it's the Cuban frogs. But this time there's a pretty good sized toad. And he's hopping along. And actually the bird is out as well. 
Here we go. Psalms 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory. Because of your mercy, because of your truth. That is just the first verse of Psalm 115. You know, an artist like Picasso, Van Gogh, we give credit to the artist, not the paintbrush that they used, not the paint that they used. You know, a builder who may build a great mansion, it's not the, the tools that he used that we give praise to, but to the builder themselves. In our lives, we are the tool that God is using. All praise, all glory, all honor goes to Him. The great things that you accomplish in your life, remember to give God the glory. Because He's using you to do great things. Whether it be you praying in your room. You see, people may not see prayer as something important. But just think of what prayer is. You are directly talking the God, the creator of the universe, interceding for affairs of men that are happening around you. Um, that's a pretty important position. To be there before the king interceding for people, for situations. Nobody else may see it. You may not receive the praises of people for praying for what you do in secret for the Lord. But the God Almighty knows what you're doing. And you know what? One day, He will honor what you've done. And even the fact that you get to go before Him. You know, not everyone can just walk up and be in the presence of the President. Uh, you have to have special benefit, uh, you know, places, positions of authority to be able to do that. Well, you, me, we get to go before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. What an awesome thing. We have to remember to give Him glory. And it says, because of your mercy. And that word mercy there. Um, let me see if I get it right here. Mercy is a Hebrew word has said. I may not be saying it right, right. In this instance right here, the word that's used here, it's a Hebrew word has said. And it means mercy, loving kindness, a loyal love, a covenant love. Kind of like in the New Testament, the word agape appears in the New Testament as that, that special God love. Well, this word mercy here is kind of like that. It's just a special term for mercy, which has a deeper meaning. It has that the mercy, loving kindness, a loyal love, a covenant love that God has with us. It says, because of your truth. Number two says, why should the Gentiles say, well, you know what, I am not going to get into that because we are almost out of time. Keep your mind on verse 1 today. Think about that. About giving God the glory for all the wonderful things in your life. Things that you've accomplished. Don't forget to give Him glory. And thanking Him for giving you those abilities. And we give Him glory because of His mercy and because of His truth. We have the word, his truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Give God glory. Give him praise. You can read through Psalms 115 today. Tomorrow we'll hit verse 2. <laughs> and maybe we'll go 2 through 8 or something like that tomorrow. We'll see. But meanwhile, keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Remember, you are loved by the Most High God. That's what matters. Please Him. Leave, live your life 
in a way that gives your Heavenly Father honor and glory and brings Him a smile. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.